Dear students, welcome back to the class. Today's topic of discussion is drugs used in glaucoma. Now, on the right hand side, you can see a picture depicting a normal eye and an eye suffering from glaucoma. So, with this picture, you can get a slight idea that glaucoma is maybe or it is due to the raised pressure or raised tension. Now, what is raised tension? That is the intraocular tension. So, glaucoma is mainly due to the raised or increased intraocular tension. Now, on the left hand side, you can see an eye which is suffering from glaucoma and this is the pictorial depiction of the eye suffering. So, what is seen here? The pressure is raised and that results in the damage of optic nerves. So, let's quickly look into the other slides for details discussion about glaucoma and the drugs used in glaucoma. So, this is the content slide. In the contents, I have included glaucoma, what is glaucoma, types of glaucoma, types of glaucoma in details with their pictorial depiction, classification of drugs and their mechanism of action, and how autonomic control of glaucoma on iris of the eye. On the right hand side, you can see a picture that is showing the symptoms of glaucoma. So, it includes the morning headaches, cataract, red eye, nausea or vomiting at times, visual impairment in glaucoma and eye pain. So, these are the probable symptoms that are found in case of glaucoma a patient is suffering. So, what is glaucoma? Glaucoma is a group of eye diseases which result in damage to the optic nerve and cause vision loss. And why? Because of raised intraocular pressure. So, glaucoma is basically a disease that is occurring due to increased intraocular pressure that results in the damage of optic nerve and vision loss. Now, let's see what are the therapeutic measures to be taken to reduce glaucoma. Lower the intraocular pressure or the intraocular tension. Reducing the secretion of aqueous humor or by promoting its drainage. And next is lowering the intraocular tension retarding the progression of optic nerve damage even in normal or low intraocular glaucoma. So, these are the therapeutic measures that should be taken and on the basis of that, the drug should be administered to recover from glaucoma and to reduce the chances of occurring glaucoma. On the right hand side, again a picture is there showing a normal eye. You can see the drainage canal allows the fluid to flow out. Drainage canal means here the aqueous humor is allowed to flow out. So, there is not excessive accumulation of aqueous humor. But on the right hand side, you can see this drainage canal gets blocked. So, on blocking of this drainage canal, what happens? The aqueous humor gets accumulated in a hefty amount, which leads in the intraocular pressure raised and increased. And ultimately, this raised pressure leads to the damage of the optic nerves and ultimately the vision loss. So this way, how glaucoma is occurring in our eyes and how it is having its damage to our eyes is being illustrated. Next is the types of glaucoma. Glaucoma is majorly two types, that is open angle glaucoma and angle closure glaucoma. Now, for open angle glaucoma is a condition of the eye that leads to progressive atrophy of the optic nerves. So, what happens to the optic nerves? They are atrophied in the presence of an open angle and it is accompanied by the changes in the appearance of the optic disc, loss of peripheral vision and has historically been associated with elevated intraocular pressure. 
So ultimately you can see the main target is the raised intraocular pressure. But how? Due to progressive atrophy of the optic nerve. So this is the open angle glaucoma and here you can see in open angle this is the drainage canal which is locked. Here the cones, the drainage canals are locked. This is the lens and this is the fluid flow. Now in case of angle closure glaucoma what is said? It is a closed angle glaucoma also it is being called which occurs when the iris bulges forward to narrow or block the drainage. See here you can see this iris is being, this iris is being bulged forward. Why? To block the drainage and ultimately by the cornea and iris. As a result, the fluid cannot circulate through the eye and the pressure increases. So in both the cases, the intraocular pressure is increasing. In case of Open angle glaucoma, the progressive atrophy of the optic nerve is occurring. And what is happening here? It is accompanied by the appearance of the optic disc. Means the optic disc appearance is changing. That's why it is blocking the drainage of the eyes. And thereby ultimately increasing the intraocular pressure. So this is happening in case of open angle and in case of angle closure or closed angle what is happening the iris is bulged forward so that what happens the drainage is being closed and on closing of the drainage there is not proper circulation of the aqueous humor aqueous humor is getting accumulated and ultimately the pressure is raised which pressure intraocular pressure is raised and ultimately causing glaucoma. So this way I have illustrated the types of glaucoma and how they are causing the disease that is glaucoma. Next is the very important part that is the drugs used in glaucoma and their mechanism of action. So dear students here I have just given you the tabular form of the drugs. But I will suggest you all as well to go through your textbooks that is KD Tripathi or Rang and Dell, whichever available to you all. Please go in details for the drugs. Maybe the names of the drugs will be the same. But for their mechanism, you need to go in details. Here I have jotted down the exact heads up points. But for details, you need to go through the books. So let's quickly what's written in this slide. So the class of drugs that are included for an open angle glaucoma or you can say in general for glaucoma is the beta adrenergic blockers, the alpha adrenergic agonists, the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, the prostaglandin analogs and the myotic agents. And the examples like timolol, the examples which you can remember, just get it the names in that way, timolol, metipranolol, levobunolol. Alpha adrenergic agonists like brimonidine and apraclonidine. You know clonidine, alpha and beta blockers together. There is a central blocking agent. Then the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. That is the brinzolamide, dorzolamide, prostaglandin analogs like lansoprost, bimotoprost, latinoprost. All prost are ending with prost. See. The ending terms you have to remember so that you can remember the names of the drugs. And the myotic agents is pilocarbin. This is a very common and this is a carbacol. Now how these drugs are acting or their mechanism of action in just one line. Like timolol, it falls under the beta adrenergic blockers. What does they do? They block the production of the aqueous humor. Then apraclonidine. Apraclonidine forms under the alpha adrenergic agonist. Then it blocks the aqueous humor. Dorsazolamide, that is carbonic anhydrous inhibitors. It is blocking the aqueous humor. Acetazolamide is also doing the same. Lanatoprose, that is a prostaglandin analog which is causing the increased aqueous humor drainage. Manitol, this manitol is mainly used in case of closed angle glaucoma. It decreases the volume of vitreous humor. Pilocarpine, you can see it is a myotic agent. It constricts the people, facilitates the drainage, 
from anterior chamber and prednisolone acetate it also reduces the inflammation and corneal hazing this is also a drug which is mainly used in case of closed angle glaucoma but dear students if you are asked about the drugs it is not necessary you have to write individually the drugs used in open angle or closed angle you can write as a whole but yes if you remember and you can write it separately that's a very good aspect so this way i have illustrated the mechanism of action as well as the classification of drug hope for any doubts and queries you will just go through your textbooks for details about it but this is the basic of it next coming to the autonomic control on iris so dear students you may have a question that why ma'am has chosen glaucoma as a topic of disease why not any other disease so dear students if you see a picture you can see here three types of eyes or pupil i have demonstrated that is normal pupil mitriatic pupil and myotic pupil so here the three conditions are occurring and how this autonomic nervous system is having its effect on the iris of the eye is demonstrated so let's look into the points the autonomic control of iris muscles and the actions of mitriatics and myotics are illustrated well in the provided diagram so what does a mitriasis or mitriatic agent do contraction of the dilator pupil and here relaxation of the sphincter pupil so here you can see there is a dilation in case of mitriatic agent so next point and in case of mitriatic agent you can see a constriction so topical installation of atropine causes mitriasis abolition of light reflex and cycloplegia lasting for 7 to 10 days so when atropine has been given which is a acid anticholinergic drug you all know so what is happening it is causing the mitriasis mitriasis means abolition of light reflex and cycloplegia for about 7 to 10 days so here what is happening here there is a relaxation is occurring relaxation of the splinter pupil is being done by the anti muscarinic ganglion blockers see here you see here the drug is used and here there is a contraction of the dilator pupil that is alpha 1 adrenergic agonist certain so this results in photophobia and blurring of near vision so the near vision is getting blurred why because on giving the atropine there is a mitriasis that is a beginning of the pupil of the eye so you can't see a clear vision so ultimately what happens the intraocular pressure or the intraocular tension tends to rise and especially in case of narrow angle glaucoma however the conventional systemic doses of atropine produce minute ocular effects so next is provided is the meiosis so meiosis is the contraction of the sphincter pupilli and here what is occurring that is being done by the muscarinic agonist and relaxation of the dilator pupilli that is occurring by the alpha adrenergic agonist and the adrenergic neuron blockers so dear students so this way the autonomic nervous system is having its control so you can understand that this agents are used mainly for the relaxation and contraction now i will give you an idea of myotic agents myotic agents work by the contraction of the ciliary muscles that is they are tightening the trabecular meshwork and allowing the increased outflow of aqueous through traditional pathways so meiosis results from the action of these drugs on pupillary splinter so myotic agents are usually parasympathomimetics so this way we can understand that what are myotic agents and what are myodriatics myodriatics are the agents that helps in the inducing dilation of the pupil that is drugs such as tropicanamide are used as a medicine to permit the examination of the retina and other deep structures of the eye 
to reduce the painful ciliary muscle spasm. Painful ciliary muscle spasm is what? Cyclopelagia that I described here, cyclopelagia. So, how does this mydriatic agent? They induces the dilation of the pupil. So, you can also say that they are used to treat the inflammatory eye condition or to reduce the cyclopelagia. Pelagia. So, what is cyclopelagia? Cyclopelagia is the reduced painful ciliary muscle spasm. So, this way, dear students, how the autonomic nervous system is having its effect on the eyes and how this glaucoma is functioning, its causes, its symptoms and in the drugs acting on glaucoma for its recovery is being illustrated. Thank you students for listening to this presentation. Hope you all stay safe during this crisis of COVID-19 and hope this presentation will help you in doing your assignments. For any doubts and queries, please ask me regarding this presentation anytime and I hope you all will do the assignments on time. Thank you.